Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay and this is Life with Lindsay. Today we have a whip and chat. Um, if you do not know what a whip and chat is, that is whip WIP, which is work in progress. Um, my current whip is Fathoms Below uh, by Mandy Manzano. This is a discontinued kit from Diamond Art Club. I did a quick unboxing. I will leave that for you guys up in the eye. Um, but anyway, I'm working on my current whip. You guys can pull out whatever it is that you are working on and work alongside with me. Or you can do something non-crafting related if you'd like. I have people tell me that they like to listen when they're driving, when they're at work, when they're doing household chores. Basically like hanging out with a friend. Um, but you don't have to actually be in that close of proximity. <laughs> Although you could be. I don't know. I don't know where you live. You don't know where I live. Assuming. I mean, maybe some of you do. That's weird. Let's just move on. Anyway, um, if you're new here, hi, welcome. I'm Lindsay. I do mainly diamond painting and some other crafting related content. And I would love for you to like, subscribe, hit the bell, hop aboard the Hot Mess Express. Let's all be friends. So um, I hope that everybody is doing well. If you've been here before, welcome back. Thanks for hanging out. Um, if you've been here before, you already know what to expect. If you're new here, you're probably like, is she always like off the rails? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So before I get into my week, I just want to say I'm really bummed. I filmed a reel last night and I thought I had like, I planned everything out really nicely. Um, this section right here, I worked on everything around it so I could finish filling it in, in the reel and just the angle at which I was filming, which is totally my fault, but I can't undo it now. Um, it was basically just like my hand was like in the camera and every time it moved, it would make it blurry and then refocus. And I was like, well, that was a waste of my whole afternoon. Um, so I'm just pulling out a couple colors here. I am working on the top half of the mermaid. Um, my husband is in the room. Uh, he is next to me. He's got headphones on, so he's probably in his own little world. He can hear us, guys. Don't say anything bad about my husband. Um, you can say whatever you want about yourself. Anyway, uh, if you guys don't know, my husband is the data monster. He does custom Funko Pops. He's super dope. He's really cute. He's really tall, um, which is not relevant to the story, but, um, I appreciate that he's tall. I'm so glad I pulled out one color for, for a whole color for one drill. Um, speaking of drills, before I get super into this, if you guys saw my unboxing of the trays... Um, which if you didn't, I'll link that one for you guys up in the eyes. Uh, these are my trays from Bijou Bliss Design. So they are magnetic trays. And as you can see, I have them like stacked right now. Uh, there's a blue tray and a white tray. So I, when I did my unboxing, I said that I was missing a, uh, magnet. And I had reached out to Christina, the owner, and I had let her know, like, hey, um, just a heads up. It's not a big deal, but this one is missing a magnet. And she was so apologetic. And I said, look, it's really, it, it really is not affecting my ability to use the tray. I love the tray. Um, but I just want to point out that she went above and beyond and sent me a handwritten note in the mail with an extra magnet and instructions on how to glue it back in. Um, when I tell you guys the importance of transparency in small shops she had no need to do that none at all and she did it because she wanted me to be a satisfied customer which like surprise i already was um but something like that to see how somebody goes out of their way to treat their customers like that i cannot recommend them enough uh, you guys it i have dealt with if you guys didn't know um i have a small child she is five and a half years old and we have been in the small shop like handmade clothing world for many many years now um and it's funny because i have people say to me like i can't believe you would spend that kind of money on clothing for her and i'm like well when you have a child that doesn't fit in off the rack stuff my kid is tall and super skinny like to the point that she's literally wearing a 2t skirt today um anyway and I've been in this world and I will tell you I have I have waited to the ends of the earth just because a shop was honest with me. They let me know there was an issue or a delay or whatever it was and they reached out to me. If you are a small business owner in any kind of business, it doesn't have to be, you know, small shop clothing, it doesn't have to be diamond painting, but any kind of small business, you should never wait for your customer to approach you to find out where their missing item is. And I don't mean like, oh, you send something in the mail and it didn't show up because 
let's face it, most people, once they tr they send their packages out to their customers, they're not tracking them. But I'm talking about if you haven't shipped it and your turnaround time is a week and it's now four weeks, you shouldn't be the one, you should be the one to reach out to them to let them know like, hey, I'm so sorry, there was an issue. Here's what the issue is. I can do a refund. I can let you know when it's shipped. Whatever it is, just be honest with your customers. And I'm telling you, they will appreciate it. Not everyone, because some people are just buttholes. Um, but Christina, if you're watching this, which I'm sure you're not, but if you are, thank you so much. I, I really, really appreciate it. And um, I just want you guys to know if you purchase from them, like that's the level of customer service you're going to receive. And I very much appreciate it. So if you guys, you probably can't tell because of like the angle I'm filming at, but I have my flash on which I probably should have turned it off, but between the flash and, like, the light pad and then the overhead lights and the ring lights, I feel like I'm having trouble seeing, um, which is ironic because I do all of those things so that I can see better. Um, anywho, guys, it has been, it has been a very interesting week. Where are my notes? Here are my notes, everybody. Um, I'm gonna just scooch them over here. So, I know last whip and chat, I left you guys off and I ran out of time. Um, Pretty sure we talked about Saturday, but Sunday, Sunday was just a rainy day. Um, we did a Trader Joe's run. We are going out of town um, later this current week. So we wanted to get in one Trader Joe's run before we left so that we could load up on snacks. Um, for anyone new or newer to my channel, uh, we have cut all numbered dyes, all artificial coloring out of our diets. Um, and it's been a wonderful experience for our family and for my daughter. We see a huge difference. And, um, that piece has an extra tab. We're going to take that off because can't lay a drill next to it. I will say it's been a while since I've felt like, wow, there's a lot of trash. Um, I have more trash in this canvas so far than I did like in my entire last canvas. Um, but anywho, so Trader Joe's, if you guys are U.S. based, I can't speak to any other country, although Europe has like totally different, uh, food laws, which the U.S. should adapt. But anyway, um, Trader Joe's, anything that is like their branded stuff, um, is dye free. And so it makes being able to do certain kinds of shopping really easy there like we don't have to worry about looking at the ingredients for everything we're picking up and putting in the cart which when you have a child with you um that's really helpful because like they don't want to sit there while you read 75 labels and also my daughter is getting to the point now where if you guys have kids or grandkids um how old were they are they when they stopped using a shopping cart please let me know um, my daughter is very much ready to be done sitting in a shopping cart, but the problem is, like, she is completely unaware of her surroundings, and, um, like, for her own safety, I don't really want her, like, running off, because that's not unheard of, but anyway, 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 so we went, and we wanted to get some snacks, because we we're going on a road trip, and while I do know there are some things that I can get at a convenience store, um, like, Sweet Tarts ropes, for example, are dye, are dye free. Sweet Tarts themselves are not. Um, but I can't pick up M&Ms or Skittles or things like that. Uh, so we get a lot of those kinds of specialty items at Trader Joe's. There's also a brand that's, that's carried at Target called Unreal um, and Yum Earth. And, um, you know, it's, is it a lot more money? Yeah, but my kid's not eating candy seven days a week. I say, as I have a literal bag of candy here, I got the M&M Caramel Cold Brew. Um, I want to try them, but I didn't want to try them around my kiddo because that's rude. Uh, you guys, I am a mess over here. I'm actually going to take a sip of coffee. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have a Sheets anywhere near where you live, but their coffee is pretty good. Um, it is like a convenience gas station. Uh, but it's more localized. Anyway, so we went to Trader Joe's. We got a bunch of stuff. And then I made dinner. If you guys have been around, you probably know that I have, like, massive kitchen anxiety. I hate cooking, like, more than anything. Um, 
I heated up cheesy bread in the oven and then I made, don't kill me, people who like to cook, I made gnocchi in the microwave and I served it with a salad and I felt very accomplished. Um, that's like my level of cooking. And it's funny because I've been letting my kiddo help me in the kitchen. And so now, like, anytime, I usually end up making something that goes, like, in the microwave or the oven for lunch because I'm not about that life of, like, preparing something that needs to be, like, made by hand. Actually, nothing needs to be made by hand unless that's what you're into. Um, but yesterday I made something and she's like, Mommy, can I help you? And I was like, sure. And I was like, okay, now pour it into the bowl. Okay, now pour this water in. Okay, now mix it up. And she's like, yeah and is very excited um she's very much at that point in life where she just like wants to help all the time but like i don't want to let her chop vegetables and then i see those like kids cooking competitions and i'm like this child is seven years old and they're baking a four letter cake i'm like i won't even let my five-year-old near the stove <laughs> like to each their own anyway so that's what we did that was that was our saturday or sunday it was real rainy we watched a bunch of movies last weekend because it was gross. It was rainy. It was like, I don't know about where the weather is, where you guys are, but it was just like day after day after day after like gross, rainy. And then it was like, oh, it's going to get warm, but it's raining. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that's wasted. And then, did I put that color away? I sure did. Doo -doo -doo. Um, I probably don't even need that tray to do that, but that's okay. Um, anyway, so... Where am I at? And this was also one of those uh, trays from that haul. This is one of those Bella book trays. Um, I will say, if you guys saw me struggling with that in that video, it definitely got a lot easier, like, after using it over and over and over again. But man, did I, like, I broke a nail on camera trying to get this one out. And now I don't remember which way it was supposed to go. That made a difference. You guys are probably like, can you just get to it? <laughs> uh, welcome to my world, you guys. This kit is an older kit, but it is like hella sparkly. I'm enjoying it. Um, and I'm doing this. I don't think I mentioned it. I'm doing this for Crafting with Susie is doing a Mandy Manzano event. It's like Mandy's mind-blowing May. Um, so if you want to participate, you have the entire month of May. Um, if you're watching this, like, way in the future, um, check back for more events. <laughs> uh, you guys, I'm losing my mind over here. Anyway, so, Monday, uh, back to the grind. So, dropped our kiddo off at school. Um, we had to return our library books. And, in reality, what we did was just renew a bunch and then return the rest um my daughter does not know how to read yet because she's five and she's in preschool um and she so desperately wants to learn how to read uh and we've been picking out like short chapter books and it's been really enjoyable but she underestimates how long it takes and she'll like pick out like 25 books and i'm like girl Mommy is not going to read this many books. Like, that's a lot of books. Um, not to mention the bajillion books that she already has at home. But I will tell you, if you guys don't have a library card for your kiddos, you absolutely should. Our local library is fantastic. It has, like, an entire playroom. And they do age-appropriate story times. Like, there's story times for, like, little kids. And then there's story times for, like, preschool, kindergarten age kids. And um, they've got these summer reading programs that... They told us to keep our eye out because those open up soon. And the playroom in the back, it has great toys to play with. Um, a lot of, like, STEM kind of toys, like magnetiles and blocks and things like that. And then, did I just add an extra drill where it didn't need to be? Plausible. Um, I'm just going to attempt to finagle these i have been using so much pressure like on my hand diamond painting that, like my fingers hurt which is weird because like i never really had that issue before anyway um 
and then they have like a whole art station where kids can use construction paper or um, like different, they have those scissors that come in different shapes. So like the ones that have like the squiggles and things like that. And it just, it's a lot of fun. And they have a little mailbox in there so you can make a card and like send the card. Um, so of course my daughter wanted to make a card for her grandmother and she did. And then she decided she didn't want to put it in the mailbox. She wanted to take it home so she could mail it to her grandmother. And then subsequently, no idea what to do with it. So, um, but we set out and let her know, like, look, kiddo, you're going to have, I don't remember how many minutes we gave her, but X amount of minutes. And when we're done, we're done. Um, my daughter has a very difficult time with transitions, um, more so than the average kid her age, but every kid struggles from going like, they don't want to leave the fun thing that they're doing. Even if it's to go do something else, that's fun. Um, so it's been a little bit of a struggle, but it's something that we've been working on and I definitely am not loving how dark this skin tone is. I don't know if it translates in camera. Maybe it'll look fine. I'm going to trust the process. Um, but she did a really good job at the library and she, um, we renewed some books and then we, uh, requested two more books. One, which wasn't on the shelf the last time we were there. She's been reading this series. It's called Owl Diaries. There's Owl Diaries and Unicorn Diaries. And they are, as I mentioned, beginner chapter books. Um, they're about 60 something, 70 pages long. Um... And they're meant for kids of her age to enjoy being read to or like first and second graders being able to read it on their own. So we didn't know there was another one because they published that one this year. So I was like, oh, cool. Let's see if that one's available. So I had to request that. And then the one that we just, it wasn't on the shelf. So if you guys have kiddos, young kiddos, preschoolers, kindergartners, uh, first grade, that age range. Um, the book series, Layla and the Bots, it's almost, it's done in a way that's very similar to like, I guess, I guess it would be considered like graphic novel style. It is absolutely fantastic. And it is about a little girl who, um, has robots and they invent things, but she also has a rock band with them. And so it's got a lot of diversity. It's, like, girls in science, um, robots. It's fun for everybody, but it is, it is easy and readable. The one, the Owl series, like, I really, my daughter really loves it. And, like, God, there's, like, 13 books. Um, it's great, but everything is, like, owl-rific. Owl-tastic. It's, like, can you just, can you just say fantastic? Can you just say owl like, it makes it so difficult as an adult to, like, read it out loud because I'm stumbling on words that are made up. Um, but Layla and the Bots, I highly recommend. And if you guys have any recommendations for books similar to, like, how I described, please let me know because, um, <coughs> I, you know, I don't want to read the same series of books over and over and over again. But we went to the library. We left the library, which the last time we left the library was, like, a huge like gut-wrenching kind of meltdown for her and I was like kid it's okay like we will be back we live close but we're not there every week because mommy can't read the books fast enough um so we did that and we went to a place we end up we usually go there like once a week for lunch um and we did that and then um later in the day we went to the market for groceries um and so that is a giant. Um, I know like if you, there's like Fred Meyers and Kroger's and things like that. Giant is pretty like our big market in the area. There's more than one, but that's like the big one. And they have this robot that wanders the store. And I know I've talked about Marty before, but like Briar loves Marty. Like she loves him. And his job is to seek out spills and things throughout the store and to alert the system that like, hey, clean up in aisle seven. She, yeah, he did have a mask on during the pandemic and he has a name tag and um, all of that fun stuff. Anyway, she loves him, you guys, like loves him. And she didn't see him roaming the aisles because, well, he was in his charging station, which is by the front door, which I think is a very weird place. Um, but also, if you guys want to see, like, a fun video, look up 
uh, like Marty giant um, parking lot. And there's one in like the Lehigh Valley section of Pennsylvania, like Allentown, East and Bethlehem area. And it escaped the store and it was just like in the parking lot. <laughs> Think of it as like a Roomba that's like six feet tall, but doesn't clean anything up. He just tells other people to clean things up. But anyway, she, she was so like bummed that he wasn't roaming the aisles. But um, yeah, she is definitely like, I don't want to sit in a shopping cart anymore. Shopping carts are for babies. And it's like, well... I would love for you to not be in a shopping cart, but I need to be able to trust that, like, you can keep yourself, your hands to yourself. And, uh, you know, my child has the attention span of a goldfish. And that's saying a lot. Um, the next day was Tuesday. We went ice skating. Uh, and I have decided to sign my kiddo up for an additional learn to skate session. So the way our lives work right now is we have been doing the Tuesday morning TOTS class for two years. And that is like eight and under or something like similar to that. Um, they're a little bit more flexible in the summer because you got a lot of kids who like them and their sibling are trying to ice skate. And, um, you know, most eight-year-olds during the day are in a physical classroom. But more and more you're seeing a lot of homeschooled kiddos coming to our TOTS class because... It works well with their schedule. Anyway, um, so we do Tuesday morning tots, and then we do a private lesson on Friday afternoons. So over the summer, with us losing all structure of school and ice skating being the only constant that she has, um, we are going back to swim lessons. And I'm really hoping that by the end of the summer she can swim independently um, because that would be fantastic. Uh, which you guys crazy. Like I always talk about how you're the best parent in the world before you have kids. One of the things that was super, super important to me was my child to have uh, water safety and to learn how to swim at a very young age. And unfortunately, like in the area that I live in, like it was impossible. I kept trying to sign her up for like three years for swim lessons and they, they just never had openings or they never got back to me or they were 45 minutes away or it just never worked out. And thankfully we found somebody locally who has a pool and she does it inside her house or inside her pool, not inside her house. And so we'll be picking those back up later this month. Um, but anyway, I have my kiddo signed up for two weeks of camp this summer, but like ice skating is her only constant. And I figured if I add in another six, seven week session of ice skating, we can add in a little bit more routine to her life. Uh, and so I am doing that. And um, her coach wasn't thrilled because it's not at their rink. It's at a rink closer to our house. But in the grand scheme of things, and, you know, I'm six weeks of lessons, group lessons, is not going to undo two years worth of what you've taught her. Um, I think that there's a little bit of, uh, like an oh shit moment of like, oh, it's possible that she could go elsewhere. Um, which, like, would be nice if the people in the front desk understood that. Uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, if you watch, I, I don't know if it was last week's Women Chat or the one before, I guess it was probably last week's, where I was confronted about um, stealing ice time that I didn't know that I was allegedly stealing. Uh, and I just, if you have a problem with me, approach me, tell me, email me. You don't even have to talk to me. You can email me. You can shoot me a text, whatever it is. But sitting there conspiring behind my back um, until somebody who had enough balls to say something could be in the rink. Like, I have a problem with that. I've been spending thousands of dollars at this rink for my daughter to ice skate there for multiple years. And, um, anyway, we'll get to that a little bit later. But, so I did sign her up for another course. So over the summer, she's going to have Tuesday mornings, Thursday evenings, and then Friday afternoons. Um, the rink that we skate at, our home rink, they have a Monday night class, but I thought Monday night and then Tuesday morning was just a little much. 
Um, anybody else, especially with squares, like, pet them. I do this, and then if I find any drills that aren't, like, 100% pushed down. I don't know if it's just because of the light, but do you guys think the skin tone looks really dark? I feel like it looks really, like, pink. And that's coming from somebody who has very pink skin in real life. That would be me, in case that wasn't obvious. Anyway, so, after ice skating, um, we brought her home. We had some lunch at home. We hung out. I'm pretty sure we watched another movie. You guys, it was... I want to tell you, it was just gross. And we were waiting for it. I can tell my kiddo is like, when's it going to be nice out? Um, she also has this correlation of when it's sunny out, it has to be warm. Which, like, girl, we just, we just, winter just ended. It was sunny a lot of days. And it was cold a lot of them. <laughs> um, or she'll be like, it looks like it's a good day for a movie. And I'm like, girl, it is bright and sunny out. Like, I don't know why you think. But... She's equated rainy days and gross, like, bad weather days with being able to watch movies, which makes sense, because that's when we watch movies. Um, which we also watch The Masked Singer is, like, the first time we've watched a show with her. Uh, we don't really do TV with her because, as I mentioned earlier, she struggles with transitions. And I am definitely not one of those people that's like... Screen time's gonna rot your kid's brain, blah, blah, blah. You do what you need to do. Like, I've got friends who, like, they literally cannot get anything done if their kid doesn't have, like, tablet time. Um, they just can't do basic, everyday things. Um, and then I've got other friends who, like, my best mom friend, her son uses a tablet as a communication device. It's like, why would you take that away from him if that's his form of communication? Um, so you do you. Whatever works best for you. Uh, but for us... TV is, like, very much a privilege. She gets one episode of something before bed, like, if she's lucky. Obviously, things are a little bit different when we're, um, on vacation. Because it's, you know, harder to control that. And also, like, kid just go to sleep. Um, but anyway, so... And right now, she's really into Spidey and his amazing friends. And, um... We started watching The Rubble... Uh, from Paw Patrol. He has his own spinoff. Let me take a sip of milk. Milk. Whatever. Mm. Coffee. Coffee! I don't want it to go and get cold. I don't know why I just said it like that. That was weird, Lindsay. <sighs> oh, a mess, you guys. Um, what else do we do? Um, we bought our tickets for Little Mermaid. There was a point to me talking about TV, and I don't remember. Oh, watching The Masked Singer. So we watched that with her, and um, I'm excited. I mean, I would love to be able to watch, like, television with her. Did you guys grow up? Like, I remember, like, watching, like, family TV shows. And now, like, looking back at it, I'm like, did I? Or did I just watch it with my siblings, thinking my parents watched it with us? But in reality, they were just, like, doing their own thing because the kids were leaving them alone. I don't know. Did you watch TV shows with your parents? Yeah, at night. Okay. I mean, I don't know what age I started watching them. Yeah. Because, like, I don't... Re I, I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. Shows I did you guys watch TV with your parents? Let me know down below. And if you did, if you have any, like, TV shows that you watch that you remember, like, very clearly being like, oh my gosh, we watched Step by Step every Friday night together, which I can tell you that I watched Step by Step, but I don't think my mother or father ever watched Step by Step. Um... Also, if you don't know what that is, I'm probably old. Anyway, uh, we got tickets for The Little Mermaid. I don't know if I said that or not. So we're going to see The Little Mermaid the day before she graduates from preschool. Uh, so I'm excited about that. And the next day was Wednesday. We took the kiddo to school again. Um, I think next year she's going to be really confused as to why she goes to school so many days. Because right now she only goes to school three days a week. And kindergarten where I live... And I've complained about this before, is half day, and I hate it. Um, so it's not like she's going to go from three days a week, three hours a week, three hour, three times a week to, you know, five days full hours. But still, I think that's a bit of an adjustment, and I'm curious to see how it'll go. But she's ready. She's so excited. And I'm just praying that we get a good teacher because I don't want someone to ruin my kids' love of learning. Um, but we dropped her off at school, and then my husband and I went to Staples. Uh, we've been having some printing issues, and so we were going to sit and wait for it, but that really wasn't an option this time, so I was like, oh, okay. Um, 
you just kind of hope and pray that they don't screw it up because they don't carry the paper that we print on in-house. Um, but also, like, those kinds of days suck when they're like, okay, it'll be ready after four, and you're like, oh, so now I have to drop it off, go do the rest of my day's worth of stuff, and then come back. It's like, cool, 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 cool. Um, and you can pay to, like, stay and wait, which is very weird because, like, we've done it before. Um, there was nobody there this time. Last week, the last time we were there, it was, like, insane. It's like, everybody was at Staples at the same time. But anyway, we went to Staples, um, went to the post office, um, and then we picked up our kiddo from school, and we were having a really, she was having a really good day, and so I was like, why don't we go to Five Below after her nap? Um, so we did, and... I am one of those people that can spend, like, all my money at Five Below. My daughter is the same kind of kid. She'd be like, I want this, I want this, I want this. Um, but we went, and it's a really good way for her to get a little boost of dopamine, but also to, like, work on boundaries. Because, like, if I say we're getting this, you can only get one thing, and then she has to make the decision. Um, but I really like doing, like, the blind bags or the blind toys with her. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. They're the ones that, like... For example, you could get a Disney princess and it's in a ball and you don't know which one it is until you open the ball. Because I think that teaches a lot of good lessons because if it's not the one they want, they have to deal with disappointment and they have to be appreciative about it. Um, I mean, I guess they don't have to, but that's the goal. And she really enjoys, like, the excitement of finding out what's in it. So, um, we did one and I got LOL dolls. Is that what they're called? And, um, we opened it up and she's like, Ooh, this is cute. There was a ring. There was a scrunchie. There was some hair ties. There was a sticker and a tattoo, I think. And then she just looks at me and she, with confusion, she goes, mommy, where's the doll? And I was like, I don't know. Well, that's my fault because I'm the one who said, let's try this one. Look how cute they look and did not read. There's no doll in this one. I'm like, Oh, whoops. And she was totally okay with it. She was like, that's okay, Mommy. I really like the stuff I got. And she actually is practicing putting her hair in her ponytail by herself with the scrunchie she got. So, um, kudos to that. But we also got these little, they're like weighted stuffies. They're like the size of your palm. And my hopes is that that is something that she could keep in her pocket as like a transitional item. Currently at school... She has one of their toys in her pocket, uh, and then she has to give it back at the end of the day, which sometimes it's harder uh, to give it back than others. But I was hoping that this would be something that could be like a source of comfort for her. It's also weighted so she can put it on her lap if she wants to. Um, sometimes throughout the day, um, I am a firm believer that everybody on the planet has sensory sensitivities it's just a matter of if they affect your life or not like everybody has that moment where like let's say you step on something with socks on and it's wet I don't think there's anybody on the planet that goes "Ooh, that it's an enjoyable feeling they're like oh gross but then they can move on other people cannot I cannot I have to take my socks off or I have to put shoes on or whatever um and so I think that there's a benefit to sensory based play in general but I think for her um, there's those moments where she just really needs like deep compression and deep squeezes. And sometimes it helps her if she can be the one hugging something. So I thought something little like this where she could pull it out of her pocket, squeeze it herself, like give it a big hug and put it back in her pocket. Like that maybe that could be beneficial to her. So I did email her teacher and she's it's in her pocket today to let her know like, hey, just so you know. Um, because I don't want her going in there thinking it's, like, a toy that she can play with and brag to her friends, like, I have a toy, you don't, um, or anything like that. But they've been really good at working with her on having a transitional item. They actually had asked that I send one in her book bag at one point, and I did. And then, like, three weeks later, my, my daughter was like, why is there always a toy in my backpack? And I was like, well, I guess they didn't take it upon themselves to explain to her why it was there, because they told me to not tell her anything. But then I don't know that they didn't realize it was... I don't know. I don't know. Um, but that didn't work. But we've had many incidents where, like, 
she got called back inside because she doesn't want to leave the toy in the school that belongs to the school. Um, so I'm hoping that this helps. And if it doesn't, then she now has a little toy that she can play with at home. Or at restaurants, or whatever. So, um, we did that, and then while we were out, we were like, let's just grab some dinner. Went and got Mission Barbecue, which we haven't been to Mission in a really long time. I feel like there was a period where I was talking about us going to Mission, like, every week. Um, but we hadn't been in a long time. She did really good. Um, they gave her a coloring sheet, which... Literally, that's the first time they've ever given it to us. And I'm like, is this new? Or do they just never offer it to us before? I don't know. Um, but she was digging it. And she's like, Daddy, can I have some Can I have some sauce? And he's like, sure. And, you know, if you've ever been to Mission Barbecue, they have, like, a caddy of, like, six different barbecue sauces on the table. And then there's also a white Alabama up at the front if you want it. And then, like, a spicy one over by the drinks. Um, and she's just... She's, she said to me the other day, one of her favorite things is to try new foods. And I was like, really? You know, in the moment, I don't believe you. But, like, when you talk about it. <laughs> Every time we have dinner, I don't believe you. <laughs> but I am very willing to let her try something. And if she doesn't like it, it's okay, you know? You don't have to eat the sauce. That's why we put it on the side. But she's a hoot. And um, we had a good time. And then we went over to Cold Stone because I, like, ice cream. I mean, so does she, obviously. She's a kid. But um, I was very excited, so I got some peanut butter chocolate something or other. Um, they have all their ingredients listed online, so I can look that up, which is very helpful. Um, and there's certain things, like I know Reese's Pieces, like, I can't have that in the ice cream because that has dye in it and M&Ms and, you know, things like that. But um, it was good, and we sat in the back of the car together and ate it and enjoyed it, and, uh, I was very excited. I can readjust over here. Oh, how are we on time? Oh, pretty good. I'm taking another sip of my coffee. Mm -hmm. Are you guys hot or cold coffee people? Let me know. What is your ideal coffee order? Are you team Starbucks or are you team Dunkin'? Answer all of these questions, and if you don't, you're fired. I'm just kidding. I've had people say to me, they're like, oh, man... You ask all these things in the video, and then I forget what they are, and then at the end of the video, I don't have anything to comment because I don't remember what you have. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, I feel like I'm that way, too. Like, I watch certain people's videos, and I start typing a comment. YouTube needs to upgrade itself where, like, if you're typing in a comment, and you just want to, like, click out, like, so you can keep watching it, but you don't want to hit send on your comment, it's, it's always like, do you want to keep this? keep editing this or discard it and I'm like can it just sit in the chat box until I hit send like anybody works at YouTube make that happen <laughs> if anybody works at YouTube is watching my videos um then I'm probably in trouble <sighs> and even then they're not watching it it's robots um which a former coworker of mine we were talking about how I come from the world of radio how AI is just going to take over and make it so that the job that I did that nobody needs to have humans doing it anymore and literally like two days after that conversation I saw an article that that's exactly what they're trying to make happen now and I'm like listen if AI could come and like edit my videos I wouldn't be mad at that which I'm sure there's AI editing software but um not that I even do that much extensive editing. And the fun videos, like if you guys watch my unhinged boxing, um, which if you didn't, I will leave that one for you guys up in the eye. Um, but that one, that had a lot of editing in weird ways. I'm making a note. I can't type. Hinge unbox. Okay, well, I meant unhinged unboxing, but it's cool. Lindsay, you'll understand what your own notes mean, hopefully. Um... And if I don't make timestamp notes, you guys, then I have to go back and listen to my whole video for another hour. Which, whatever. Anyway, Thursday, we went horseback riding. And this was the first time since we started riding that there were other kids there. And um, I was pretty impressed watching Briar do what she, she was doing. Yeah, she really did. Like, you think this kid isn't listening to you? And then you realize, like, she's paying attention, but she's not absorbing everything. Because sometimes she's really, like, just, like, you know, listening with, like, one eye open kind of thing. But she, like, 
really, really, really loves going to the stables. And I love seeing her there. It is yet another expensive <laughs> activity that this child does. And, um, <coughs> you know, I don't know if you guys have ever seen what I look like. But I'm super fair. I don't I don't do well in the sun, in the direct heat. Like I don't I don't want to be outside in the summer in ninety three degree weather just beating down on me. Um so we'll see how it goes for the summer. Um but I do see the benefits and understand why equine therapy is so helpful. And she has to take responsibility and she has to clean, um, like groom the horse and she has to help put the saddle on you know she is strong she's like super strong but lifting something up high that's heavy is different than just picking something heavy up or having core strength or whatever so um now that there's other kids i'm like am i supposed to be doing more of this with her and not the person doing the instructing i don't know um and i guess i will ask next time like am i supposed to be more hands-on at this point because there's three kids that have to get stuff together now um but it's funny because the one kid's like i haven't done this in a year i don't know how to do it and she's like you're fine and briar's just looking over at him like i know how to do it i'm like girl that's because you've been riding for the last like month he hasn't been on a horse in a year um but she's funny uh and she had a good time and then the last couple times we've gone for some reason, it really makes her work up an appetite. And I'm not saying that, like, horseback riding isn't something that you're burning energy. But she gets out of there and she's, like, ravenous. And I'm like, girl. So, I had brought a snack with us in the car. And, um... She was like, I, I want... I'm still hungry. I want fruit. And I'm like, girl, I don't have any fruit with me. Like, I'm in the car. She was just... It's funny when she when she's she gets hangry she really does um but it's funny that like the things my kid wants to snack on i feel like a lot of kids are like absolutely not no way i don't want fruit leather i don't want dehydrated fruit i don't want and like briar's just like give it all to me um hey she's learning to listen to her body oh where did that color go boop 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 I feel like I have the most random array of diamond painting pens on my table at the moment. I'm currently using this Halloween pen from Kevin's Creations with little ghosties on it. I love this thing. Um, but yeah, it's a very random colors of the world. That was the Spice Girls. That has nothing to do with ghosts. I don't know why. Um, but speaking of ghosts, I was talking about earlier, small shop stuff. So, I know a lot of parents, when their kids get to, like, potty training age, um, or they are potty trained, they no longer like pajamas that are one-piece pajamas. I'm the opposite of that. Give me all the one-piece pajamas. The problem is, two-piece pajamas, if I get them so they're long enough for her, they are too big in the waist. She takes off the pants, never wears the pants, we lose the pants, and then I just have a bunch of pajama tops. Could I just put her in, like, t-shirts to sleep in? Sure, but then, like... Anyway, so this one company was like, we're doing a drop, and they have bamboo pajamas, which I love, and they were like, we're extending the zippies to size 5T, and I was like, hell yeah, so, um, and they have little ghosties on them, and Briar is super into that, so, uh, that's where my side note was. What is this? Okay. Well, I can't get whatever it is out of my drill tray. Goodbye. Um, where am I? Thursday, riding. That was it. I don't think we did anything else. Friday, we took her to school. Um, Fridays after we drop our kid off at school, my husband and I go on a breakfast date. Um, and it's interesting. I live in a pretty conservative area. Um, so, you know, by the clientele and the, the by the clientele, that the television choices were intentional. So on one TV, I've got the 700 Club um, doing the story on, like, hearing aids. And I was like, what? Or dental implants or something. And I was like, 
what? And then on the other TV is Fox News, and in the middle is, like, 15 men in their, like, 70s and 80s just eating away. And I'm like, this is such a random mishmash. Um, I mean, I'm not sitting there watching the TVs when I'm eating. I'm spending the time with my husband. But, all right, I have a, a mini rant. It's not really a rant. It's just a complaint. Um, so, take it how you will. I like my bacon. Very well done. Um, if it is, like, flabby and fatty and soft, I will not eat it. When I order bacon very well done, and I emphasize the very, because I don't just want well done bacon, like, I want it on the verge of being burnt. Like, very, very crispy bacon. And the same waitress, three times in a row, I've ordered the bacon well done, and it comes out. And so, they definitely pre-cook a lot of their breakfast food, because it comes out in, like, minutes. And, um... She's like, oh, I'll fix that for you. And then literally takes the cooked bacon and throws it back in the microwave. Which gives it a different texture, but whatever. That's not the point. And so she brought it out, and it was, like, rubbery and fatty and gross. And I was like, hi. And she's like, hi. And I was like, um, can I get the bacon very well done, please? And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Did you want me to go put these in the microwave for you? And I was like, sure. And I'm like... I understand that they pre-make it, but, like, if you have somebody who week after week is sending it back because they're asking for it very well done, then tell the cook that. Like, they can throw it in the deep fryer. They can throw it on the flat top for, like, an extra minute or two instead of just microwaving already cooked bacon. It's super frustrating, and I know, like, I could get it without bacon, but when something comes with bacon or sausage and I want bacon, I want the bacon. Um, but that's my rant. End of rant. Um, anyway, so my husband and I had our little mini date, which, um, has been really nice, you guys. I really enjoy, it's literally the only, like, one-on-one -on -one time that we get to spend outside of, like, when our kid's asleep. Um, because we don't, we don't have, you know, grandparents that we can drop her off with or, you know, things like that. Um... We'll, we'll see how that goes, because this weekend we're going to be spending a lot of time with my mother-in-law, and she is real adamant that she's going to be able to handle her, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, we're going to be there. It's not like we're, like, dropping her off and leaving. But I also know that she's stubborn, and if my daughter is too much for her to handle, she's not going to be like, okay, you guys can come get her. She's going to just deal with it until she, like, hurts herself and then complain about it a week later. But we did that, um, and then after school, we picked her up and we took her to ice skating. So, um, like I mentioned before, the ice skating situation, I'll link that whip and chat up in the eye. Um, let me make a note of that as well. Ice skate whip. So, super long story short, if you guys didn't hear it, I was basically accused of, like, stealing ice time. And I shouldn't say being accused of it because I was unintentionally doing it. Um, but nobody ever said anything to me. And the guy who works at the front desk when we're there for her lessons, apparently he's just too timid to say something. And here's my problem. If you work in a customer service industry it doesn't matter if it's for retail or like true customer service or whatever if you can't approach the people that are coming in and out of your establishment and handle them then you shouldn't be working in that position i have no idea if this guy is talented at something else or skilled at something else that they think he's like an asset to their team that's not my place to know that i've never spoken to this man a day in my life but my problem is they waited and they brought someone else in to approach me to let me know. Um, and I was pissed about that because, you know, they have all of our information. They know exactly who we are. They could have very easily sent me an email explaining the situation. Um, they mentioned something to my coach who, uh, I guess, realized after my lesson that somebody had spoken to us instead of her being the one to talk to us. But also, it's not her job to tell us these things. It's her job to coach my daughter. Um... And so, like, I'm not mad at her in this situation. I'm mad at how it was handled, and I'm, I'm mad at how I was approached, and all of that fun stuff. So, 
I was discussing with her because my daughter's school year is ending and the way it works now is on Fridays we pick her up from school we hit the McDonald's drive through on the way to the rink and then we go have a private lesson we don't have enough time to sit down anywhere and eat but we have too much time if I bring a meal and she eats it in the car so stopping for food that we eat in the car works out best for her and the schedule but once school is out like this time frame isn't the best for us so we are going to switch during freestyle ice now if you guys don't know anything about ice skating there's two kinds of like paid ice time that you can get unless you like rent the rink for yourself you have public skating which is exactly what it sounds like it's open to the public anyone can ice skate it does not matter your skill level um and then you have freestyle ice freestyle ice is meant for those who are higher level skaters to practice skills and routines during public skating you are not supposed to do certain um moves like you're not supposed to do jumps and uh certain elements where like your foot is lifted above like your hip level uh because it's hazardous to the non high level skaters that are just floating around um and there is a price for that and a price for public skate now the freestyle ice you can buy it 30 60 90 or 120 minute increments um, and obviously it costs more the more ice time you're there but we have a 30 minute lesson and that's all we need we don't need um an hour and a half you know my kiddo she at public skate and this is my problem is that, like she's not there to utilize public skate she's used she uses that time for her lesson and then when her lesson is done she gets off the ice and we leave um and we're not there for the first hour of public skate because we're in the car coming from school so it actually is more cost effective for us to do um freestyle in all honesty but my daughter is not at a high enough level no she's not mature enough to do freestyle ice time without a coach being there because you've got people working on single double and triple jumps you know my kid's five years old and if she's not paying attention she's gonna get knocked into some someone's gonna knock into her or vice versa and um but we also can't start working on a routine a program for her to compete with um during public ice because we can't play music so um i was talking to the coach because i wanted to make sure i was looking at the right thing because you can buy your ice time online and i noticed for freestyle ice they have a booklet where you can get 10 hours of ice time um for a discounted rate and i asked her i said is that 10 one hour sessions or can that be 20 30 minute sessions she said you can just rip them in half and do them that way i'm like cool that that's exactly what would work for us then so while i was doing that i noticed i can also buy my public skate time online now the reason that they knew that we weren't paying for our ice time besides the fact that we had never gone up to the cash register i guess is that you have to have a sticker and they print new stickers each public skate session so you can't just like duplicate them at home and like make endless stickers um which i totally understand and i have no problem with but I went and I purchased my ice time online so it didn't come with a sticker and I'm guessing I'm supposed to check in and then they give us the sticker but I'm just waiting now for somebody to approach me and be like we had a discussion with you and you still are continuing to not pay for ice time when I can show them the receipts and be like really here's here's the date that you guys told me and we paid for it in person and here's every date since then that we've purchased online if my daughter was going for just public skating I would have no problem going up to the desk and buying the sticker there um but not a single word was said to us and the real timid guy behind the counter again didn't even look over in our direction and i'm just like the lady who runs the front office the guy who runs that like they just it's not a very professional environment and i don't know how they treat the people that work there um but i can tell you that they certainly don't treat the people who do pay for things like their money is valuable to them and i don't appreciate that because anyway it's really it's if you guys can't tell like how frustrated i am with this situation like it's just it's very frustrating um but anyway um i had finished my other whip and i started this whip that day um the next day we hung out at home it was a really good day and so i had said to briar is there anything that you would like to do? 
and she first she asked to go ice skating and I was like really you want you want mommy to take you ice skating she's like yeah and then she's like well if I could do anything today I'd want to go to the playground so we took her to the playground um like the public playground and we've had quite a few issues where she wants to go to the playground and then we we use the timer we let her know you have six minutes left you have two minutes left okay it's time to go and like meltdown city happens and she doesn't want to leave and she's really upset and the one thing that i have constantly reminded her thanks to like every parenting blog that i've ever looked at ever um is that i validate her feelings and i let her know it's okay to be sad it's it's okay to be sad that we're leaving it's okay to be sad that we're doing, we're not going to do this anymore. Like, it's okay. You're allowed to be sad in those feelings, but what you're not allowed to do is be, the rule is you're not allowed to be destructive towards people, places, or things. Um, and that seems really straightforward, but when a kid is super angry and they're hurt and they don't know how to explain to you, I'm really sad right now because I want to keep playing and instead they throw something. That's their way of saying it, but you got to do it without being destructive. You've got to do it. You can be frustrated. You can be mad. You can live in those emotions. They are okay to have, but it's not okay to then turn around and try to hit something or someone or break something. Um, and so we let her know what the expectations were before going to the playground. We told her exactly how long she was going to have. And that we were going to give her updates on it. And then as soon as it was over, we were going to get going. And I needed her to show me that she could get going without freaking out. Like, and I reminded her, it's okay for you to be sad that we're leaving. But we still do have to leave and we have to get in the car without it being a fight. And I have explained to her, which again, she's five. So like she still has little kid brain and little kid logic. She thinks that if she just freaks out and carries on. That she's going to just get what she wants. And the fact of the matter is, whoo, as I dropped my pen, um, the majority of parents get to a point where they're just like, I don't want to hear the whining anymore. Fine, you got what you want. And then that tells their little five-year-old brain or however old your kid is that, like, if I just push hard enough, I'm going to get what I want. So breaking that habit and and setting and holding the boundaries is by far the hardest part of like the parenting because you have to get through that shit storm of emotions before they come around to realizing like oh mommy and daddy aren't gonna do that or okay this is how it's gonna be and so she said i can do that mommy i promise i can do that and you guys she blew me away she when she was ready to go she said, can I jump off this one more time before we leave? And I said, absolutely. And then we have to walk out the door. And she got in the car and there was no screaming, no tears, no fighting. And I explained to her that the more you do things like that, where there's no fighting, no carrying on, no crying, no like, again, she's allowed to be sad. I'm not saying she's not allowed to cry and she's not allowed to be sad. But the more she handles it in this kind of manner, the more likely we are to do more things like this with her. And she's like, oh, okay. Like, I think she's starting to realize it. Um, and it's been really lovely because she's definitely getting to a point where, like, I can see those wheels are turning and she's starting to understand. Of course, when she's in shutdown mode, just like as uh, you as an adult, like, if you're having... A shutdown session for whatever's going on and somebody tells you just knock it off calm down you're not going to knock it off and calm down you're just going to get worked back up um she's not hearing me when she's shut down so uh, i was really really proud of her and she handled it really well and um then we had to stop at walmart because i needed socks and then of course she got upset because she wanted to come in um she was hungry and i had the snack in my bag again she gets hangry like i said but we did that, um, and then we came home and played outside for, like, a good hour or so, and, um, she's funny, she scraped her toe and didn't notice it, because she wanted to be barefoot outside, and I was like, listen, if you want to, go for it, like, I, I don't love being barefoot outside, but, uh, you know, you do you, and she didn't even realize she scraped her toe until she sat down to eat dinner, and there was, like, a little bit of blood at the surface, and it was like, <gasps> Oh my god, I hurt myself. And like, if she hadn't have seen that, she wouldn't have even noticed. So before bed, I said to her, Okay, kiddo, well, here's what's going to happen. Mommy is going to, we're going to clean it off. 
and we're going to soak our feet and, um, and then mommy will dry it off and we'll put a band-aid on. I don't want the water to be too hot and I don't want there to be too much pressure. I said, I got you, baby girl. I got you. So I filled up the, the water in the tub to about ankle height and we both sat with our feet in the edge of the tub and she's like, this is really nice. And I'm like, yeah, she's like, you could see the wheels were turning. She's like, I could do this more often. And I am definitely a bathtub person. I don't know if you guys are, but like as a kid, um, like when I was old enough to like run my own bath, uh, that was like my happy place. I still like to do that when I'm stressed out or exhausted or my body aches, just run a bath and just soak in it. But it was, it was a really lovely moment, moment, just her and I sitting there at the edge of the tub, just feet in, relaxing, having a little mommy and me time. And then I pat her feet dry and put her bandaid on. And next morning she said, everything was all good, but, um, that's where we're going to get out of here. Um, if you guys enjoyed this, if you made it all the way to the end, leave me some sort of coffee emoji since we were talking out about coffee or beverage emoji. Um, so I know that you made it to the end. Um, but that's it. That's all I got for you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you'd like to see, um, more content like this or, you know, nothing like this at all, please make sure to give this video two thumbs up. One real life, one virtual. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Come join the Sparkle Squad. While you're there, hit that notification bell. Ding. I do not operate on any sort of schedule. I operate on toddler standard time, and I record when my tiny human is sleeping at school or sleeping. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>